All right, so welcome to 6.9. We're going to be clearing fractions from two-step equations. We earlier cleared decimals from equations, and now we're going to clear fractions, which is even more useful than clearing decimals, I think. So now, we just did a lesson on dealing with fraction coefficients. If you have a fraction coefficient, you're not going to do today's lesson. All right, that's for so what we're going to learn today is when you have lots of fractions in an equation. But when you have a fraction coefficient, step one is still the same old. We're going to have one third x, and this is 12 minus 7, subtracted 7 from both sides, multiplied by the reciprocal, both sides, and you get x equals 15 here. Here you subtract 21. This is a one step equation. Why do I have that here? We'll explain. But it had the same answer as number one. Well, that's interesting. Now, we're going to be multiplying fractions today. So let's see that. Three times one third, right, is three over three, also known as one. And three times seven is 21. And three times 12 is 36. Now, why did I have you do that? Look at the two equations at the top. What I did there was I took the original equation and I multiplied both entire sides by three. And look what happens. The three denominator gets canceled out. And so the fraction disappears from the equation. And then three times seven is 21 and three times 12 is 36. So just like with the decimal trick where you had to do it to every term, you have to do multiply every term by three to clear your fraction here. Now, again, you wouldn't bother to clear a fraction here because there's only one fraction and it's in the coefficient. But we're going to be doing problems that look like this. If you have 1 fifth x minus 3 fifths equals 5 fifths, this is sort of a simplified version, we could get rid of all these fives in the denominator, right? Because if we don't, we're going to have to add 3 fifths to both sides. You can do it that way, but it's easier to clear it. So you multiply everything by 5. These fives cancel, and you get 1x, also known as x. These fives cancel, and you get minus 3. And these fives cancel and you get five and then you could solve this equation and turn x turns out x equals eight here all right so let's learn how to clear fractions from equations all right so we're going to we have to get rid of this four okay so to get rid of that four you multiply both entire sides every term by four right fours cancel each other out and you get one x or x fours cancel each other out and you get three but then you have to do it over there because you have to do both entire sides four times six is 24. look what happened that became a one-step equation subtract three from both sides x equals 21. let's try another one all right so we're going to clear those sevens so you have to multiply everything by seven even the thing without a fraction gets multiplied by seven both entire sides so the sevens cancel out you get x Minus 7 times 3, 21. Those cancel out. You get 5. You add 21 to both sides. And in this case, x equals 26. Now, you don't have to do it that way, but it's way easier. You know, you could add, you could just add 3 to both sides, and then you would get x over 7 equals 3 and 5 sevenths. Leaving those fractions there is going to cause you all sorts of pain when you don't have to deal with it. So you might as well clear the fractions and you get an equation that has the exact same solution, which is way easier to solve. Okay, now, those two, you have the same number in the denominator, but we now have different denominators, right? We have two, some threes and sixes. So we've got to figure out a number to multiply both sides by where I'll be able to cancel the six and cancel the three, both of them. Now, earlier in earlier grades, you learned how to say to add one sixth to uh, two thirds. If you had to add one sixth to two thirds, right, they have different denominators. There was a procedure, right? You had to find a new denominator there. What denominator would you use in that situation? Well, hopefully you would use six because that's the correct thing to use. And so let me show you that right here. So you would use six not three you would use six what did i just do there sorry having eraser issues okay so you would use six right and you would leave the one sixth and then you would multiply this top and bottom by two and turn that into four six 
right? That thought process where you decided to use six to change for those denominators is called the least common denominator. And so it's the least common multiple of three and six. So it's the same thing here. So what we want to multiply both sides here is six. So let's see that. We're going to multiply every term by six. Once you multiply one term by six, you've got to multiply all of them by six. So now, three divided by three is one. Now, this six doesn't go away, but three goes into six two times, right? These sixes go away because you're canceling there. This six and this three, this three, three divided by three is one, six divided by three is two. So let's see what we have left. We have two times one x, which is two x. We have minus five, and we have two times two, four. All right, we have cleared the fraction. It turns out this equation, which is way easier to solve, 2x equals 9, divide both sides by 2, x equals 9 halves, or 4 and a half, or 4.5. But So you're trying to think of a number that will allow us to cancel both denominators, right? It's going to be at least the size of the larger one. So let's see that. All right, so we're going to have to figure out something that multi we could cancel both the 2 and the 7. Well, it can't be 2 because 2 wouldn't cancel 7. It can't be 7 because 7 wouldn't cancel 2. But what number would cancel both of those? Well, it would be the same number if you were going to add 1 half to 3 sevenths, right? What would be the denominator you would use there to add 1 half to 3 sevenths? Well, hopefully you would say the denominator I use 14, and that's the same number we multiply by. Multiplying by 14, which is the least common multiple of 2 and 7, will allow us to cancel all these fractions. Let's see that. So this 2 cancels with the 14. The 14 becomes a 7. This 7 cancels with the 14. The 14 becomes a 2. This 7 cancels with this 14 and becomes a 2. Now, let's see. We have 7 times 1x, 7x. We have 2 times 5, 10. So it was minus 10. And 2 times 2 is 4. Wow, that's way easier to solve. Add 10 to both sides, 7x equals 14. Divide both sides by 7x equals 2. Okay, now let's cancel both a 2 and a 10, right? It's got to be 10, right? If you go, it's the lowest number that's on both times tables. The 10 is on the 10 times table, and then it's also on right? It's also on the two times table. It's the lowest number on both of them. So, and the key is you got to multiply that three times 10 as well, both entire sides. This two cancels and that 10 becomes a five. This 10 cancels with that 10. There's no canceling there. It's just 10 times three. So we have five times X, five X minus one equals 30. Okay. Add one to both sides. Five X equals 31. Divide both sides by five. Yeah, 31 fifths is an answer. Now, 30 fifths is 6, so it's also 6 and 1 fifth if you really wanted to do that. Let's try this again. All right, so we have 3, 2, and 6. What magic number will cancel all of those? Well, hopefully you picked 6. Now, if you pick 12, that works because it's a common multiple. 12 will cancel all of those. You'll get a different equation than we will because it's not the least or lowest common multiple. But it is a common multiple, so it will work. Okay, so that's our goal, just to get rid of these fractions. Three goes three divided by three is one. Six divided by three is two. Two divided by two is one. Six divided by two is three. These sixes cancel, so we have two times x, three times one, which is three, and equals five. Add three to both sides. Two x equals eight. Divide by two x equals 4. Now that came out nice whole number. I Most of these are going to come out as fractions, okay? Just so you know. All right, so we have to cancel a 3 and a 6, so we're going to multiply both sides by 6. The 3 cancels with the 6, and the 6 becomes a 2. These 6s cancel. Now we have 2 times x, 2x, which didn't help because they all start with 2x, plus 1, so it doesn't look like it's going to be c equals 6 times 4, 24, right? Can't forget to multiply both entire sides by 6. With 5 and 10, you multiply both sides by 10. 
5 cancels the 10 becomes a 2. These 10s cancel, these 10s cancel. 2 times 2x is 4x, so it doesn't look like it's going to be b. Minus 3, so it doesn't look like that, equals 7. Yeah, it's a. Let's practice this. Okay, so in the first one, we're going to multiply everything by 8. Cancel, cancel, and you get x minus 3 equals 40. And that's all it says, write an equation with whole numbers. You didn't have to solve it. This next one says clear the fractions and solve the equation, which also means you can't solve it by adding. You Now, it is possible to solve this by adding 3 halves to both sides, just way harder. And you're after today, if you really wanted to do that, you could. But today, you have to do it this way. That's why it's worded that way. So we're going to multiply both entire sides by 4 here. The 4 is canceled. The 2 cancels the 4 and becomes a 2. And we get 1x or x. 2 times 3 is 6 equals 4 times 5, 20. Wow. Add 6 to both sides. x equals 26. The, we're going to multiply both sides here by 14. And 7 cancels the 14 and becomes a 2. The 14s cancel. The 2 cancels the 14 becomes a 7. And so we get 2x minus 5 equals 7. Add 5 to both sides. 2x equals 12. Divide both sides by 2. x equals 6. And I just wanted to make sure I did that right. In this one, you're going to multiply both entire sides by 12. 3 cancels the 12 becomes a 4. The 12s cancel. 4 cancels the 12 and becomes a 3. So it's 4 times x, 4x, plus 1 equals 3 times 3, which is right, it's 3 times 3, which is 9. Subtract 1 from both sides. You know, neither of these are frac. I told, warned you about fraction answers, but these are all coming out very nicely. Okay. Wow, now, this is a hard one, right? 12 is not going to get the job done. And let's just see that. The 12 would cancel the 6, and the 12 would cancel the 12. But the 12 won't cancel the 8. We need something bigger than 12. So what could we do? We need a number that is on the 6, 8, and 12 times table. So 12 didn't work. How about 24? Is 24 on the 8 times table? 8, 16, yeah, it is. 24 on the 6 times table. 6, 12, 18, 24. Yeah, so the magic number here is 24, and that's about as hard as I can make them. Okay, so the 6 cancels the 24, becomes a 4. The 8 cancels the 24 and becomes a 3. 12 cancels for the 24 and becomes a 2. And so we get 4x, and we've canceled that 8. Minus 3 equals 2 times 11, which is 22. Add 3 to both sides. Now, this one's coming out as a fraction. 4x equals 25. Divide both sides by 4, and it's 25 fourths. Now, 24 fourths is 6, so you also could have said 6 and 1 fourth. And if you memorize 6 and 1 fourth as 0.25 or 25 cents, you would also get that.